Welcome to the Orange Coast Unitarian Universalist Church on Zoom. We recognize that our church property rests on a Hachiman and Tongva land. My name is Jan Mavy, and I am your worship associate today. I am joined by Reverend Sean Wilshire, our minister. Beth Syverson, our director of music ministries, will lead us in song. This morning, the choir will share two recorded pieces with us. Reverend Judy, our Director of Religious Education held classes for our children before our service and will hold a youth class right after the service today. I would like to invite you to open the chat box and if you haven't already, say hello this morning. We'll be turning off the chat during the sermon portions of the service so as not to distract you, but we'll turn it on right afterwards or as needed during the service. As Unitarian Universalist, we have many different beliefs, but we are one loving community. We are bound together, not by a common set of rules or beliefs, but rather a covenant. A covenant is simply a promise, a promise that whatever our beliefs, we accept one another and encourage each other in spiritual growth. We affirm that all life has inherent value and that all existence is interconnected. We strive for justice and compassion in our deeds and relationships. We are committed to creating a welcoming community without regard to the traits that sometimes divide people. I want to extend a special welcome to visitors. If you are seeking a spiritual home, we hope that you will find it here. After the service, we will place everyone that remains into Zoom breakout rooms for 20 minutes of virtual coffee and conversation. Everyone is welcome to join in, and it's a great way to get to know people in the congregation. Let us light our chalice, the symbol of the Unitarian Universalist tradition. If you have one at home, we can light them together. Let our worship begin with the lighting of our chalice as we say our unison affirmation. We encourage you to say our unison affirmation, even in the privacy of your own home, knowing that people all over the country and beyond are saying it with you. Please join me now as we begin. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. To dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love, and to help one another, this we affirm together. Please join Beth in the singing of our opening song. Thank you. 
have walked that long road to freedom, I have tried not to falter. I have made missteps along the way, but I have discovered the secret that after climbing a great hill, one only finds that there are many more hills to climb. I've taken a moment here to rest, to steal a view of the glorious vista that surrounds me, to look back on the distance I have come, but I can only rest for a moment, for with freedom come responsibilities, and I dare not linger, for my long walk is not yet ended.
So our reading today, our first reading is Let America Be America Again by the African-American poet Langston Hughes. It was composed in 1935. It's kind of a conversation about the American dream. Now, I read this poem, if you remember, of course you all remember four years ago, exactly four years ago. So I read this poem after the election four years ago. And I'm reading it again today, and this time I invite you to consider how his words might ring differently this time. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream it used to be. Let it be the pioneer on the plain seeking a home where he himself is free. America never was America to me. Let America be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love where never kings connive nor tyrants scheme that any man be crushed by one above. And never was America to me. Oh, let my land be a land where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath, but opportunity is real and life is free. Equality is in the air we breathe. There's never been equality for me, nor freedom in this homeland of the free. Say, who are you that mumbles in the dark? And who are you that draws your veil across the stars? I? I am the poor white, fooled and pushed apart. I am the Negro bearing slavery scars. I am the red man driven from the land. I am the immigrant clutching the hope I seek and finding only the same old stupid plan of dog eat dog, of mighty crush the weak. I am the young man full of strength and hope, tangled in that ancient endless chain of profit, power, gain, of grab the land, of grab the gold, of grab the ways of satisfying need, of work the men, of take the pay, of owning everything for one's own greed. I am the farmer, bondsman to the soil. I am the worker sold to the machine. I am the Negro servant to you all. I am the people, humble, hungry, mean, hungry yet today despite the dream, beaten yet again today, oh pioneers. I am the man who never got ahead, the poorest worker bartered through the years. Yet I'm the one who dreamt our basic dream in the old world while still a serf of kings who dreamt a dream so strong, so brave, so true that even yet its mighty daring wings in every brick and stone, in every furrow turned that's made America the land it has become. Oh, I'm the man who sailed those early seas in search of what I meant to be my home. For I'm the one who left dark Ireland's shore and Poland's plain and England's grassy lee and torn from black Africa's strand, I came to build a homeland of the free. The free? Who said the free? Not me. Surely not me. The millions on relief today, the millions shot down when we strike, the millions who have nothing for our pay, for all the dreams we've dreamed and all the songs we've sung and all the hopes we've held and all the flags we've hung, the millions who have nothing for our pay except the dream that's almost dead today. Oh, let America be America again, the land that never has been yet and yet must be the land where everyone is free. The land that's mine, the poor man's, Indians, Negroes, me, who made America, whose sweat and blood, whose faith and pain, whose hand at the foundry, whose plow in the rain, must bring back our mighty dream again. Sure, call me ugly names you choose. The steel of freedom does not stain from those who live like leeches on the people's lives. We must take back our land again, America. Oh, yes, I say it plain. America never was America to me. And yet I swear this oath, America will be. Out of the rack and ruin of our gangster death, the rape and rot of graft and stealth and lies, we the people must redeem the land, the mine, the plants, the rivers, the mountains, and the endless plain, all, all the stretch of these great green states, and make America again. I love that poem. 
Oh, let's take a deep breath. <sighs> okay. So how does, I invite you just in this time of meditation to just think about those words. And how does Langston Hughes' poem, how does it speak to us today? What has changed in the last four years? And when you're ready, you're invited to join Beth in the singing. The tide is rising, and so are we. The tide is rising, and so are we. The tide is rising, and so are we. This is where we are called to be. This is where we are called. task is mighty the task is mighty and so are we the task is mighty and so are we the task is mighty and so are we this is where we are called to be this is where we are called storm. The storm is raging and so are we. The storm is raging and so are we. The storm is raging and so are we. This is where we are called to be. This is where we are called since the election over and nobody's running for president at the moment. It's been a good, good couple of days. But you know, I'm, I'm a white middle class hetero person and my world is not changing that much with this election. I've always been able to walk wherever I wanted without being harassed for the most part. I can hold a beloved's hand without incident, for example. I think it's important to note that as much relief as I have felt at having a different president, as I said, I can say that now. How much it means to those who have lived in fear over the last four years. I think it's really important to hear that voice too. So I thought it'd be good to hear from someone like that. So let's just watch a short video. Um, this is Van Jones, a commentator on CNN. Van, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> it's, um...
Well, it's easier to be a parent this morning. It's easier to be a dad. It's easier to, it's easier to tell your kids character matters. It matters. Telling the truth matters. Being a good person matters. And it's easier for a whole lot of people. If you're Muslim in this country, you, you, you don't have to worry if the president doesn't want you here. If you're an immigrant, you don't have to worry if the president's going to be happier to have babies snatched away or send, send dreamers back for no reason. <laughs> This is vindication for a lot of people who have really suffered. You know, the, the, I can't breathe. You know, that wasn't just George Floyd. That was a lot of people that felt they couldn't breathe. Every day you're waking up and you're getting these tweets and you just don't know, and you're going to the store, and, and people who have been afraid to show their racism are getting nastier and nastier to you, and you're worried about your kids, and you're worried about your sister. And can she just go to Walmart and, and get back into the, her car without somebody saying something to her? And, 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 and you spent so much of your life energy just trying to hold it together. And this is a big deal for us just to be able to get some peace and, 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 and have a chance for, for, for a reset. And, and the character of the country matters. And, 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 and being a good man matters. I, you know, I just want my son to, to look at this. Look at this. You know, it's easy to, to, to do it the, the cheap way and, 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 and get away with stuff, but it comes back around. It comes back around, and this is a good day for this country. I, I'm sorry for the people who lost. I, for them, it's not a good day, but for a whole lot of people, it's a good day. I saw that live on CNN, and it was hard to, to hear that just the relief in his voice to know how much that some people have suffered for the last four years. Because it's while it's been hard, I know as many people here, for many of us, it's been especially hard. You know, sort of interesting, my brother, who drives me crazy, um, he's on the progressive end of things, but uh, lately he's been challenged somewhat by that. He texted my, my twin sister, Regan, after the election, he texted her, he said, we need to remember that we live in the least racist and sexist time in the history of our country. We need to get back to healing our country. Now, my sister was a little thrown by this. She's like, wait, she's like, something feels really wrong here. Like I, and she said, can you help me articulate this? Can you help me articulate a reply? And so uh, I helped her write this. The issue isn't about the least sexist or racist time in our country, but that sexism and racism continue to harm our nation and will do so until we actually deal with these issues. There's no going back. We can only move forward. And to heal, we need to look at our country and its systems that continue to perpetuate misogyny and racism. Otherwise, we'll never become the great country that we always claim to be. Now he didn't take that well and it kind of devolved a little bit from there, unfortunately. But I can't help but think of Langston Hughes. Oh yes, I say it plain. America never was America to me. And yet I swear this oath, America will be. I swear this oath, America will be. I want that American dream. I want it for everyone born. I want to make a history that is full of ch change toward that dream. But we're fooling ourselves if we think we're, we're there, that we, or we, that we can just sort of stop and just like go back four years, that we can stop climbing that hill. You know, four years ago in my sermon following the election, which if you remember, came as quite a shock to a lot of people. And I remember in that shock, I was like, wow, okay, we need to listen to those who have been feeling so disenfranchised. Obviously, we've missed something. There's this pain and fear there. And we who lean progressive, we need to hear that pain and fear. And we were ignoring it. I think we did okay. We learned a lot and we're still learning a lot. 
But now I believe we need to listen to those who have been in pain, in particular in the last four years. We need to listen to those like Van Jones, right? Like Sarah Abrams and George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, who are telling us that they've been in pain and are afraid. You hear the fear in his voice, the relief of that. You know, people, whether they were alive now or they're dead, they're calling for just some sheer decency in our leaders, for the ability to allow people to breathe, that black lives matter, that trans lives matter, that no human being is illegal, that women's rights are human rights, that character does matter. Because the question is, what is the American dream? And is it only for the rich and powerful or is it for everyone born? So there's like two lessons so far that I've taken away from this election. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton more that everybody will be analyzing from here to Kim and come, but there's two lessons that I've taken away from this election. The first is that of course, our work isn't done. I know that many of us have thought, prayed and hoped that it would be a landslide victory. And while it was substantial and definitive, it wasn't a landslide. We are more polarized than ever. We live in these bubbles of sounding boards. And you know, my brother isn't entirely wrong. Life is better for all Americans in this day and age for the most part. 244 years ago, we became a country and 200 years ago, there were still slaves in this country and we began a systematic extermination of Native Americans. You go back 150 years ago and women couldn't vote. 100 years ago, and you'd be killed if you were gay or lynched if you were black. 50 years ago, you couldn't get married if you were gay. So yeah, looking at the long haul of history, things are better. And yet, we still have a 13th Amendment which allows incarcerated people to be used as slaves. We have women still have to put up with sexual harassment on their job and often treat it as if they're things to be grabbed. Black men can't wear sweats and jog down a street without fearing for their lives. And gay people still can't just hold hands out of fear of losing jobs, homes, and even lives. So let's not, you know, whitewash history simply because we have some good laws in place. Laws are a lot like medicine. It treats the symptom, but not the cause. Healing is not treating the symptom. Healing does not mean that we ignore where the pain and despair is coming from. You know, there's all these unhealed wounds of the past and they've left, left these debilitating scars on the soul of this beloved country. And until America is for everyone born, it can never be America again. But there is a pathway forward to creating the America for everyone born. It's been there all along. And my second reading this morning is by Alberto Rios. He's a Chicano writer and poet. I invite you to hear his words. He tell us what that pathway forward is. So again, I invite you to sit back, take some deep breaths, soften your eyes, and consider these words from a house called tomorrow. You are not 15 or 12 or 17. You are a hundred wild centuries and 15 bringing with you in every breath, in every step, everyone who has ever come before you, all the yous that you have been, the mothers of your mother, the fathers of your father. If someone in your family tree was trouble, a hundred were not. The bad do not win, not finally, no matter how loud they are. We simply would not be here if that were so. You are made fundamentally from the good. I'm gonna repeat that line. You are made fundamentally from the good. With this knowledge, you never march alone. You are the breaking news of the century. You are the good who has come forward through it all, even if so many days feel otherwise. But think, when you as a child learn to speak, it's not that you didn't know words, it's that from the centuries you knew so many and it's hard to choose the words that will be your own. From those centuries we human beings bring with us a simple solution and songs. The river bridges and the star charts and the song harmonies all in service of a simple idea that we can make a house called tomorrow. 
what we bring finally into the new day every day is ourselves. And that's all we need to start. That's everything we require to keep going. Look back only for as long as you must, then go forward into the history you will make. Be good, then better. Write books, cure disease, make us proud, make yourself proud. And those who came before you, when you hear thunder, hear it as applause. You all are the cure, the healer. You who are made from the good. So I invite you to think about this. To get in that place of contemplation and reflection. When you look at your own history, at your own ancestry, how have you changed? How have you made history? And what are you proud of? And when you're ready, you can join Beth in singing. For I am open and I am willing for to be hopeless would seem so strange. It is to go before us so lift me up to the light of change there is hurting in my family there is sorrow in my town there is panic in the nation there is whole world round for I am open and I am willing for to be hopeless would seem so strange dishonors those who go before us so lift me up to the light of change children see more clearly may the elders be more wise may the winds of change caress us even though it burns our eyes for I am open and I am willing for to be to go before us so lift me up to the light of change so lift me up to the light of change so this is the second thing that this election has taught me that each of us matters, that each vote matters. As our president-elect said, each vote is sacred. Voting is at the heart of our democracy. It is the soul of our nation because it is each one of you, each one, each vote is a single part of each person. So I wanna thank you for voting. Thank you for calling others and urging them to vote. Thank you for performing your sacred duty as citizens. Thank you for living out our fifth principle to affirm and promote democracy. And thank you for living out our mission of transforming our communities and our lives by living our principles. Thank you for making history. You know, our vote is like a superpower that each of us has access to. If we're willing to change the world, we have to exercise it. The election, as some people like my brother think, is not a call to the status quo or turning back time to the way it was four years ago. 
For better or for worse, the last four years has seen an increase in our understanding of systemic racism, misogyny. We had the Me Too movement and police brutality, all of which was lying dormant, restless, under the surface. The last four years have brought it to the surface. Our work is not done and there's no turning back. We're moving forward together. We are the healers of our nation's ills, all of us, each and every one. You know, I have to admit, I was a bit sad to see a colleague of mine post on Facebook that she was not going to tell her congregants to love those who supported Trump. She said, we're not called to do it with Nazis when they deface Jewish cemeteries or when people die because they can't afford insulin or when people who are okay with ripping immigrant children from parents and not with people perpetuating systems of oppression. Now, I can understand her point of view. I think I, I, the problem is I think that her lament comes from this misunderstanding of what it means to love. So I just want to clarify that. Love is not condoning. Love is not letting things slide. Love is not about keeping silent or just taking it. Love is about speaking up, even when you disagree. Right? Martin Luther King said justice is what love looks like in public. Love is about seeing the full humanity of the person who's spewing hate at you, or that you just even just disagree with. It's seeing that that hate may be really about fear, and maybe that deserves some pity if you can't work up to enough compassion. But love is never about condoning bad behavior, bad speech, or evil. It's about fighting against it, about not using fear's language and behavior to combat it. When we use violence or hate speech or demeaning comments that take away someone's humanity, we're using the same tools that fear and hate does. When we answer the call of love, we're answering the call of justice, of treating everyone, everyone, as if they have, have inherent dignity and worth, our first principle. So with respect to Mr. Jones, who spoke so deeply from his heart, this election is not a reset. We're not rebooting back to a previous version. We cannot lose all the hard work that we have gained and make aware of people of human rights in the last four years. And with respect to my brother, healing is not about making ourselves feel good about how far we've come. Healing is an orientation of the spirit toward wholeness. And this country right now is divided, not whole. And we can't get to wholeness by ignoring the pain and despair of so many. We have to name it and deal with it. And it's really hard and it's painful. And sometimes we make missteps. We don't do it well, but we're getting better. But just remember it's not nearly as painful as it has been for those who have had to live with it for so long. We're making history every single day. Each one of us chooses how we want America to be. But we can just for a little bit relax enjoy the vista as mandela said kind of recuperate it's been a long four years we are each of us continuing to make history so rejoice now arise and greet the day with a song of gladness and then when you are ready we will answer yet again the call of love may it be so blessed be and amen.
Thank you, Beth, and thank you, Reverend Sean. Unitarian Universalist congregations are fully self-supporting, meaning that members and friends raise all funds for the operating budget, ministries, and programs of the church. We are ever grateful for your gifts of time, talent, and treasure. OCUUC amplifies that spirit of generosity by sharing half of the plate we receive with an organization that shares our values. This month, we are supporting Stand Up for Kids, whose mission is to end the cycle of youth homelessness. They do this every day in cities across America, one youth at a time. Their volunteers and staff are there to empower homeless and at risk youth toward lifelong personal growth and to create in those youth a sincere belief in themselves through open, straightforward counseling, mentoring, and life skills training. Indeed, these youth have climbed many hills. You can find out more about Stand Up For Kids through their website at standupforkids.org. There are now three ways in which you can give online. The first is through our website, OCUUC.org. The second, do an app called Give. You can download it on the App Store for your smartphone, and once set up, you can use it for any of your online giving, including your pledge. The third method is by texting 714 942 1131. Simply text to that number, and in the message, type the amount. As always, thank you for your generosity as the offering is given and received. I would like to invite you this morning to sing and dance along with the offertory. And if you would like to scroll through and see everyone else doing the same, we invite you to do so. We've got the power. Alleluia, we've got the power, 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 Alleluia. 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 We've got the power. 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 Alleluia. Please join in singing, We Gather Together, a song that puts our intentions into words and expresses our gratitude for the many gifts we share. Gather together. My people, ah. now is that time when we honor important events and people in our lives and you are invited one and all, whether you're a member, a friend or a visitor to participate in this weekly ritual that we call Joys and Sorrows. So basically it goes like this, that maybe you're holding something, something close to your heart, moments from the last days, weeks or hours, something that struck you at your core. If you'd like to honor such a profound joy or sorrow, 
you are invited to do so. And you can do this by lighting a candle at home. It's a great way to, to honor that. Now, if you'd like to share your joy or sorrow with the congregation, I invite you to write that in the chat. So let's just take a few moments in contemplation as Beth plays some music, and then we'll begin to read the joys and sorrows out loud. And please forgive me if I miss a joy or a sorrow. You can help me not to miss any by waiting to type comments to an express joy or sorrow until we're finished. So Peggy has let us know the news. I didn't know this. It's so sad to hear of Alex Trebek's passing this morning. He seems like an old friend. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Thank you for letting us know. And Dave Carlson lights a candle of joy. He is a proud papa for the extraordinary service that his son conducted this morning. His son is another Unitarian Universalist minister celebrating the election results. So you can actually go to the Bradford UU uh, website and see it if you like. And Jeff is expressing a joy to be glad to be part of this congregation. Linda says it's a great joy that we will have Dr. Jill in the White House, our new first lady, soon to be. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. I want to, let's see, Sharon says, I want to dance in the streets of Philadelphia, Chicago, and D.C. last night. Yeah, hopefully we'll be able, I'll be able to go out and dance in the streets here soon. And Sarah Jones has had a wonderful day celebrating her husband O.C.'s birthday yesterday. Francie Coleman sent me a joy. She said her grandson, Ryan Mayhew, turned 21 on Monday, on 11, or turns 21 this coming Monday. He's a sophomore at Penn State University and she's just very proud of him. Yay, Ryan. And Sarah, who's been working hard, so hard on, oh, let's get out the vote. Uh, she says, thank you to Rob, her husband, for supporting me as I was phone banking for so many days. Good man. Patrick says she, that he hopes for great strides in overcoming racism, narcissism, hate, equality, mental health, and homelessness. May it all be healed. And Barbara has lit a candle of joy for her sister and her three family members who have been recovering from COVID. Glad they're recovering. They're doing very well and on the road to recovery. Yay. That is good news. And Bob Melville is very glad to have his daughter with us today. Yes, it's glad to have you here, Anne. It's good to see you. Ah. And I think Sarah Jones also, did Sarah Jones, she expressed something. Oh, it's a wonderful day celebrating her husband O.C.'s birthday yesterday. Uh, sorry, I almost missed that one. So yes, her husband, uh, birthday, Wonderful celebration. Thank you, Maureen, for that little nudge. She sent me a private chat. All right, everyone. <clears throat> Let's light this last candle here. What I've got here. Let's light it for all the joys and sorrows that are not spoken but held silently in our hearts. And I also light it that the transition will go smoothly. Amen. So let us hold in love all the joys and celebrations and all the hurts and sadness, both spoken and silent. Let our joys remind us to be thankful, our concerns remind us to hope, and our sorrows remind us to connect. Let all these moments remind us that we're not alone. I invite you to join me in a spirit of prayer by one of my favorite poets, Jess Reynolds. It's called, This Prayer is for You. This prayer is for you. Yes, you. 
You with your mud-caked dreams and thistle-studded heart, this clear water prayer is for you, that your path might wander by a stream to wash your feet in and a stretch of flat stone to dry the sun in them. I see you in the desert, burying your bare feet to blisters in the sharp sand until you fall to your knees with the hot weight of it all. This bright wind prayer is for you, darling, that you might find branches to shade your face and one clean breath to fill your lungs. From the shore, I cannot see your boat for the fog, but I hear you, hear the sea shanties you sing just to keep your heart beating. Beloved, I am singing too, a harmony above the waves that is nothing but a prayer for you. Under the wide, thundering sky, I will find you. You, unsure if you believe in God, believe in anything but the tangled weeds in your garden and the stones under your shoes. Under the wide, thundering sky, I will tell you, you are proof enough of great love in the world, no matter the weather. Yes, you. You are proof enough of great love in the world. Amen. Let us join together as we extinguish the flame of our chalice and say together, we extinguish our chalice, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. We are a congregation made up of people who all believe differently. And yet, when we gather together, virtually or otherwise, we make up one loving community. We need not think alike to love alike. If you are a guest or a visitor or someone who hasn't yet been known to us, I invite you to become a part of this beloved community. If even just for today, we encourage you to write in the chat your name and where you are from. If you'd like to know more about our church, please see our church website for ways that you can get involved and sign up for our weekly email called The Blast at blast at ocuuc.org. If you'd like to know more about membership, please contact us at membership at ocuuc.org. If you'd like to be interested in religious education for our youth and children, please contact Reverend Judy at revjudy at ocuuc.org. Our community is enriched by its visitors and guests and friends, and we hope that they find a spiritual home here. If anyone has a question about Unitarian Universalism or how to get involved, please contact Reverend Sean at minister at ocuuc.org. She can assist you in connecting to the congregation. We want everyone to feel a part of this beloved community. So reach out and we will help you get connected. Reverend Sean has a few announcements. Okay, well, you know, like, I don't know about y'all, but I'm like, kind of, my, my brain has been so focused this last week on what's been going on in the nation that I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. We have stuff going on here at church, stuff that's gonna be happening. So the big thing is that our auction is now live. This is our big uh, fundraiser. It's the pandemonium something auction. Uh, what is it called? It's called the Pandemonium Pandemic Online Auction. It's And there's bids already starting to happen. So you want to go to look at our Blast or our website or the Reach and get a link to go to our auction um, and start bidding on stuff. There's really cool, fun stuff in there. Uh, so that's our big announcement. We've got all sorts of other wonderful things going on, including today we've got the LGBT Action Group. Um, so you're, everybody is always welcome to join in that. Um, and all of the uh, activities that you see going on here at the church. Ah, so grateful to be with you all here this morning. <laughs> right, Sarah? I see that, that sigh, absolutely. Uh, all right, together let us join Beth in singing our benediction.